So first of all, what is open intelligence? There it is. Just stop thinking for a moment. What remains when you stop thinking? There's an alertness, there's an intelligence, there's a cognizance, the capacity to know. And so to identify that for yourself is absolutely key. And what you identify is what is constant in your own experience. So we can say that there is an intelligence that's naturally present and it's wide open like the sky and within this intelligence is streaming all of our experience, all of our thoughts, emotions, sensations, everything that we can hear and see and smell and touch and this is just, we can call data. It's very simple. There's open intelligence streaming all of this data in a, in a seamless, unstoppable, unpredictable flow. And why it's important to get to know this for ourselves is that it really gives us complete freedom to be exactly as we are and to recognize that we have an incredible capacity to be of benefit. What I see for myself is that it's a very, very simple mechanism. If I focus in on any of the data streams and I begin describing them or thinking about them or trying to get rid of them or trying to change them into different ones, then there is simply tension and confusion. Um, and again, I was just thinking to your question about freedom and everybody here probably has different ideas about what freedom means and how that looks and what I need to do or need to be or what the circumstances I need to have to be free and I certainly had lots of ideas about that. Um, but it meant that there was a constant struggle in my life to try and bring about a, a set of circumstances that I thought corresponded to my ideas about freedom. Um, and even when I managed to bring about those circumstances, what was somewhat distressing and even more confusing was that that didn't necessarily equate with happiness. Um, so it might be that I thought that finishing this relationship was going to give me freedom. Or finishing this job that I was in, that, that was where my freedom lay. Um, you know, often it was about getting rid of responsibilities but I would finish a job or I would finish a relationship or um, for me it was often equated with leaving England you know once I get out of England then I'll be free and um, and then I'd leave England and I'd come to India or somewhere else and there would just be more more data streams it wouldn't just then be only happiness okay you know now I finish that relationship oh, it's just happiness from now on suddenly I'd be lonely, I'd be sad, I'd be regretful, oh, did I do the right thing, maybe I should go back to the relationship. Or, so what I saw was that no matter what decisions I make, the data continued to stream and they were just unpredictable. You know, I couldn't predict how I was going to feel one day or how I was going to feel one moment to the next. But I'd learned to focus in on these descriptions, to try and think harder about, well, what do I need to be free, for example? or um, the ideas I had about relating to people and, and what that looked like. And um, I began to see by relaxing and allowing everything to be as it was that the patterns and ideas that I had about things like freedom and also relating to people. And, um, and I began to see things like um, if a friend came to me and they were upset by a situation or a circumstance, then often it seemed to me or I'd learned that the best way to support them was to sympathize and to sort of agree with them if you like and and go along with their upset as a way to support them but I saw that actually that that wasn't what I wanted to do as I began to see that there was this stable essence that I could tap into and that by doing that I found this sense of ease, I found this sense of openness, I found the clarity and understanding as to what was going on. That I just couldn't, after seeing that in myself, support other people in continuing on to be confused. And um, 
yeah, sometimes that did lead to some, it, it, it can seem quite funny, you know, times where people would be just going on and on about a situation that had really upset them or somebody had done something and perhaps they're also expecting you to join in and go, oh yeah, that's terrible and how awful for you and you must be really upset and you'll probably never get over it and... <laughs> you know he's a bastard and you know all of this kind of stuff and and actually people come to you and at the same time there is a naturalness so of course you can be sympathetic and, and you do feel very much you know what everybody is going through but at the same time there's a clarity in seeing that I, I can't support you in making yourself a victim anymore you know I can look after you and make you a cup of tea and be gentle and there for you but I cannot support people in living a fantasy life because I know that my essence, my stable essence is open intelligence and I know that if that is true for me it is true for every other person on the planet and I also know from my own experience the suffering and confusion that comes from believing that all of my data streams, all of my experiences have an independent nature which means that they have a power over me they can affect me, they can um, really damage and hurt who I actually am. And so sometimes when people come to you and, and they might be pouring out this story of woe and trouble and, and just sitting there and listening, just with complete openness, but I have no interest in indulging and going into that story with you. And there might be then a, an awkward silence. But what I saw there was it was another opportunity for me to relax. And that awkwardness, that feeling of, oh God, I should be saying something, oh God, this silence is just torturous, it was like all other data streams. It was, a, it was a momentary sensation or thought or experience and then it just resolved naturally. And when I became relaxed with those, those awkward silences, there was no awkwardness in them anymore. It was me feeling uncomfortable with the silence that simply was then um, reinforcing that idea I had about that needs to be filled or it needs to be something other than how it is. So it's always this simple choice. What am I going to do in this instant? Am I going to focus in on everything, all of the descriptions, all of the perceptions, all of the thoughts that I'm having? Or am I going to relax, allow them to be as they are, and recognize the openness of intelligence within which and as which they're occurring. And, and that's the short moments. It's this short moment of recognizing that I can continue on thinking about everything, trying to work everything out, um, analyzing everything, comparing everything, or am I just going to relax and recognize the brilliance of intelligence as it is? And so that was the simple instruction or invitation at the beginning when I came to Balance View and, and I, I was open enough to test it out. So in an awkward silence, the next awkward silence that you have, try relying on a short moment of open intelligence. And you will find that you know exactly what to do and what to say in that circumstance. It, it, it's amazing. It's, um, you repeat the short moments and I'm, I'm still amazed by it, but it's, it's becoming more and more um, the case all of the time, where that capacity just to know what to do and what to say, it, it, it's just there. It's, um, it's, like, it's like riding a bike, you know, when um, I can remember like first riding a bike and I don't know how old I was, five, six, something like that, and um, my parents bought me a bike with stabilizers on the two back, the two little back wheels that stop it tipping over. And I was quite embarrassed to have stabilizers on my bike. It wasn't very cool. Even at six or something, I had ideas about what was cool. And stabilizers weren't cool, but I was kind of happy to have them there um, because I got on, and it was you know it's, you're on this thing, and it's like it's got this wobbly thing at the front there and you're meant to sit upright on it and, and how, how do you balance there and you do one pedal and you sort of then fall over and lose your balance and, and each pedal is like a short moment. Each time you get on and you take a couple of pedals and then you fall off again or you tip to one side or you lose your balance, 
you, you get back up on the bike and, and you take another pedal and then after a little while, not, not so long, you're, you're just pedaling along and, and for a while I had the stabilizers on and then they removed one stabilizer or and then another stabilizer was removed and, and, and then you're going without even thinking about it. You know, you're on your bike and you're cycling round and, and you just know how to do it. And so this is really similar to gaining confidence in relying on open intelligence. You could say each short moment is just like one pedal. And at the beginning it might seem a little bit difficult or how's this going to work? I, I can't do it. How am I going to, how am I going to ride this bike? This is, this is crazy. How do people do this? But I'd seen other people, other kids riding bikes. I, I knew it was possible in theory, even if I didn't know how to do it. So again, the stabilizers, the experience of seeing other people doing it, all of this is like the support that you'll find here in the Balanced View training seeing other people relying on open intelligence and, and how that looks, how it works. Seeing that it is something that is available and is an option for anyone that wants it. And um, it was amazing for me to come to this, this training and um, I remember the first year I came to the open meetings and there were the two trainers and they, they were sharing and it, it just sounded wonderful and great and I resonated with lots of things and then I came back the next year and um, and I remember that there was a guy that had been sitting next to me the first year and just sitting and listening to the, the trainers um, share and then I came the next year and he was one of the trainers he, he was up there and he was sharing like just total wisdom and brilliance and but he'd just been sat next to me the year before in one of the chairs and and long before I had any ideas about being a trainer, that was a huge thing for me to see because it was, this is not just for certain special people. I began to see that this is something that I can train up in, that this is an option for me, a possibility. And each short moment showed me in my own experience the power of making that choice in really practical ways. Now, it showed me that I had this openness that I could bring to all of my life. That all of the ideas I'd learned about everything were subsumed, were included within open intelligence. But it was the open intelligence that was primary and fundamental. That was what was informing everything. That was informing my capacity to know my ideas about anything. Without this intelligence, I wouldn't know anything about freedom or about relating or about biological determinism, which in my understanding is the idea that what we are on a fundamental level is a biological entity, i.e. our bodies. And that to me was something that I grew up learning about and learning about things like the theory of Darwin and things like that. And um, really interesting to apply the practice of short moments, first of all to my ideas about um, everything that I'd learned about who I was, but in particular my ideas about the body. So it seemed to me to be a given when I came to this training that I'm a body, that that's who I am, and somewhere in this body is a mind, and that's kind of part of who I am not quite sure how those go together. And then as I grew up and I looked into these questions a bit more deeply and looked into philosophy and um, neuroscience and psychology and, and spirituality, and I'm sure lots of you have done the same, nobody could really explain how this mind came from the body. You know, it was an assumption everywhere. You know, okay, that, that's just the way it is. But I applied short moments to my physical sensations. Um, and you could do that right now. I'm sure if you just stop for an instant, you can notice something going on in the body. If I stop, I've got a strange kind of ache in my right pectoral muscle. You know, very dull, nothing to worry about, but it's just slight, not slightly there. Um, and then, so if I take a short moment and I allow that to be as it is, what can I say about that? Not, not what other people have told me about what's going on here, but what can I say about that? Well, what I can say is that 
there is an intelligence that's wide open and it's experiencing this sensation of a slight discomfort in my right pectoral muscle. So what is primary there? Is it the body or is it the intelligence that knows and experiences everything about the body? And so I continue to take short moments because some of the ideas I had about who I was and what the nature of reality is were so ingrained and they were so all pervasive in society and I'd been telling myself and assuming them for so long like the body is primary that it was really powerful and really important for me to take short moments and discover for myself what is the actual nature of reality is the body primary or is the body another data stream that occurs within the openness of intelligence so this for me was this was i this is what i want i want a tool and i want a method and i want a technique where i can understand for myself the nature of reality i've read all of these things i've heard all of these things i've listened to other people's ideas i've taken them on board and it's just given me more ideas, more confusion. When I rely on open intelligence, there is clarity, immediate access to this clarity. Just clear seeing, clear understanding. And that's what I'd always wanted. And I can apply that to anything, absolutely anything. I mean, I'm still interested in all of those same topics, psychology and um, neuroscience and quantum mechanics. I love all of that. And now I apply the same practice of open intelligence to these same subjects and everything is seen much more clearly. The assumptions that are made in these um, subjects and topics. The ideas that um, are taken unquestioningly. But also you see the insights where people are having this recognition of inseparability. And it's fascinating to see that coming out more and more in the fields of um, quantum physics where you know, it causes the, the physicists such frustration that they have to start talking about things like consciousness. Ah, oh, they hated that, but they have to do it. So it's fascinating to see for yourself the basis for all of the confusion, not only in human society, but also in personal life. Believing that our thoughts, emotions and sensations occur somewhere other than within the vastness of open intelligence. And with the practice of short moments and the support of the rest of the training, everything just becomes clearer and clearer and clearer. And the effortless ease of being becomes more and more natural. That spontaneous reality, just allowing ourselves to live as spontaneous reality, which is always a benefit. My ideas about freedom now are very much seeing that what freedom really means to me is the freedom to be of benefit to all. That is the ultimate freedom that I would see now. And that comes about by allowing everything to be as it is, by allowing myself to be as I am. And, and that is what human life is actually about. That is the meaning of life. The freedom to be of benefit to all. And that comes about by allowing ourselves to be as we are. We are already hardwired to be of benefit. We're innately beneficial. We're powerful and we're clear. And you discover that for yourself in each short moment.